Hello everybody and welcome back. Welcome to part two of the OpenCV object tracking tutorial. Today we're going to focus on tracking multiple objects simultaneously. Uh, they could be different colors such as these fruits here. I've decided that fruits are comes in all different shapes and sizes and colors so I'm going to use uh, apples, bananas, and cherries as an example. Let's get started. Now if we want to uh, track multiple different objects, we're going to have to do two things. First we're going to have to classify the objects as to you know what it is, and then we're going to have to group all the similar objects together and uh, and display them all in, all in the same group of the same object. And uh, we're going to start out by talking about how we're going to classify the objects. Now in our C++ code, the most obvious uh, answer here is that we're going to use a an object-oriented approach where we create objects and uh, define them with their own unique with their own unique properties, and then we'll we'll look for objects in the field with the with the same features and and we'll group them together. Now, in the comments of the last tutorial, a lot of people were asking how we can go about tracking multiple objects. Well, I'm going to go over that in detail in this tutorial. Now, in C++, what we can do is we can we can pack all the similar objects into a, into a vector. And then later in the code, when we want to display them, we can just unpack the vector and display them at their respective coordinates. All right, let's take a look at this visually. So we have our uh, group of fruits here: our apples, bananas, and cherries. If uh, we can actually we can filter out the object that we're interested in, let's say the apples at this point. Um, we know how to do that. We learned that in the last tutorial. We're just going to filter within a threshold of colors. Well, after we filter them, we're actually going to create five sep separate objects for each apple found and then once we create those objects we can pack them back into a vector and we end up with a vector of apples now the same thing goes for the cherries and bananas we actually we search for them separately we actually do it in sequential order of whatever order you want we'll just go apples cherries bananas but each group will be found within its own separate iteration within the code now once you want to fetch the objects back, all you have to do is unpack the vector and then you can use their values, um, each of the objects, to either uh, display a graphic in their position or use their positions for, I don't know, maybe a game that you're making. But enough banana cherry talk, let's begin this uh, lesson by downloading the first file you see below. Okay, so once you've downloaded your file, we're going to open up Visual Studio. We're going to create a new project. Uh, we'll call it Multiple Object Tracking. Click OK. Uh, make sure you go Next, select Empty Project, click Finish. Alright, so first things first is we're going to head to the Property Manager. Uh, we're going to link our OpenCV libraries. So uh, if you if you can't find the property manager, go up to View and you can go down to Property Manager. Uh, open this up. Click right click on Debug and Add Existing Property Sheet. Um, if you followed the tutorial on installing OpenCV, you would have made one of these with me, and that's we named it OpenCV Debug 243, or the most current version right now I think is 246. So whichever one you've installed. Alright, navigate to the Solution Explorer and right click on Source Files. We're going to add in the source file that we just downloaded. Uh, I saved mine to the desktop, but we shouldn't save it there. We should actually save it in the directory uh, of the project that we just created in Visual Studio. So I'm actually just going to, I see it here, so I'm just going to cut and paste it into um, my default project directory, and I'm sure yours is too, is, is in Documents, Visual Studio 2010 projects and then the name of the project and then one more directory in and we'll just we'll just paste it into here so that it's nice and organized click add open it up all right so basically this code is where we left off kind of in the last tutorial I had to go through it and uh, change a few things such that we can work through it um, and manipulate it so that we can track multiple objects we're also going to be adding a class a fruit class um, to our to our code um, we're gonna, yeah we're gonna go over some object oriented programming and you're gonna you're gonna kind of learn the ins and outs of mm, how, how most developers actually program once you learn how to do object-oriented programming. You're going to be able to program in other languages like uh, Java 
that's what you use to for Android pro programming. As soon as you can do Java, you're able to uh, create uh, mobile applications. So it's really important that you kind of get the concept of object-oriented programming. And, and this tutorial, I hope, will kind of teach you kind of the basics of that. All right, so if we press F5 and build the program, you can see it's very familiar, just like what we had last time. I'm going to track this blue hat here just to give you an example. All right, so we got the hat tracking on. Got my head. Hey, cool. All right, so you can play around with that for a little bit, get used to it again. Uh, the whole filtering concept. Right, we're going to start out by uh, scrolling down here, down to the track filtered object function. Uh, so our, our first goal is going to be, instead of using this uh, these two integers, x and y, which kind of just, you know, generic x and y integers, we're actually going to be replacing that with a fruit. And we'll say fruit apple. We haven't made the class fruit yet, but um, when it comes to the point, when you, when you scroll down here, we got, you know, x equals this and that. We're actually going to be going something like apple.setx. And put in the x value, apple dot set y, so that we we're setting our our apple object to have the values of x and y. All right, so delete what we just wrote here. That's not going to compile. Delete this. We're going to start out by making the fruit class. So if you click on multiple object tracking up here, and go down to add, and we're going to add a class. Uh, it's going to be a C++ class. And for our class name, we'll call it fruit. And what it's going to do, it's going to create a header file and a CPP file. And if you're not familiar with object-oriented programming or creating classes, don't worry about it right now. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to all the, all the points as we go along. Okay, so we have our fruit header file and fruit source file. Uh, that means we can start making our fruit class. So underneath uh, class fruit, we're going to make our private variables. Now, we can start out by getting the basics down. Like we know that we're going to have two integers for the x position and the y position. And since it's just you know just fruit, how are we going to decipher between the fruits? So we're going to I'm going to say we're going to we're going to uh, call it a string. Uh, string type. Uh, since uh, since string is underlined red here, we're just going to have to include string. Oops, string. And it's still underlined red. So the reason it is is because we could use uh, the standard scope and type in string type. And see that's not underlined red, but that gets kind of cumbersome. So we can use uh, using namespace std for standard and you see the red goes away. Alright so control s and save our class and we're gonna go back to the to the multiple object tracking source file and remember before we made the class I was saying that our goal was to get rid of this int xy and we're gonna just type in fruit apple. Alright so the, the, the fruit's got underlined red so that's a telltale sound that we need to uh, include our fruit header file so just type, as soon as you type in the quote mark it will start to give you some suggestions fruit.h all right all right so going through this we've made our apple um, we've done some some uh, calculations in here um, we learned that in the last tutorial, but now we see we're going to have to replace this x and y. So if we go apple dot x position equals what we have here, we can see that we get an underline here. And the reason is because it's a private variable. And we need to actually we need to access it. We need we need to have a public function that's going to access the private variable. And 
I know a lot of people, as soon as they start doing this type of programming, they're like, why? Why would you do that? Well, it's really, if you have a, a large a large program with a lot of code, the reason you do private variables is so that you can localize it to this one class. So that, like, what if I have the name X pos of a completely different class, you know, like a, like a completely different object, like a, like a tennis ball or something. Okay, so we can't... Like I said, we can't, we can't, we don't want to have to make a new variable name for every single variable. We can, we can reuse the same names for uh, our different classes, just as long as we keep them private. So head back to the fruit.h, and we're going to add in a public function. It has to be public, and it's going to return an integer. So we'll say int get x position. Close brackets, and this is where we define the function. Once again, if you don't, if you've never done this before, just bear with me. We're gonna have to go to the fruit.cpp file and type in fruit and two colon signs here and click on get xpos. Close brackets and this is where we're actually gonna do the function. And since it's just whoops, okay, so that's underlined. We have it's returning an integer, so we're gonna to have to type an int fruit get x boss. Okay, that's good. So what this function is gonna do? All it's gonna do, uh, since it's within the, the fruit class, it's able to access all the variables. So we can just return fruit. Let's check it out. X boss. So that's fine. Okay, so with our x boss integer, we not only want do we want to get it, we also we'd like to set it. So we have to add in another one. This one's going to be a void function because it doesn't need to return anything. We'll say void set x pos. And since we're um, we're going to want to pass in a number to set it to, so we'll just type in int x. All right. So head back to the .cpp file, and we're going to do the same thing except this one's going to be void. So void fruit set x pos. And it's going to have an int x as the argument. Close the brackets. Now this function, all, all it's going to do is it's going to take in the uh, value that we pass it, and it's going to set x pos to the x. So all we have to do is just say fruit x pos equals x. We could also just say x pos equals x. I just like to you know keep it clean like that. All right, so we're going to have to do the same thing for the for y, so easy as that, we just copy and paste, change x to y, head back to the cpp file, do the same thing, Okay, make sure that's all right. Okay, so we have everything we need to. I know, I know, it seems like a lot just to manipulate two variables, but you'll find out later that it really does come in handy to have a well-structured class. So now that we have our two getters and our two setters for our x and y integers, we can actually go here, and we can say apple dot set x pos open bracket. And our apple dot set y pos. Okay, so once your code looks like this, we're going to scroll down a little bit farther. We're going to continue to eliminate our x and y here. Um, we can see that we also have uh, an underlined x and y, and so our our goal is to just add in apple instead of x and y. So we want to go to this draw object function. And we see it right here. So instead of passing in an int x and y, let's type in fruit, the fruit. And we see we're getting uh, some more red lines underneath where the x and the y are. And that's because we no longer have x and y. We have the fruit being passed in. So we've made our, our getters for that, so we can now 
put in get x position and get y position for the x and the y. All right, so I'm going to teach you another trick here. Um, hit Control H, and what that's going to do, it's going to it's going to bring up the find and replace. Um, so what we're going to want to find is we're going to find want to find x, and what we're going to want to replace it with is the fruit dot get x boss. So paste that into here. Put your cursor right here, and click find next. And make sure that it's uh, it's highlighting the right x. We don't want to replace something that we don't want. And click replace. It's going to go to the next one. See, it found an x here, but that's uh, in the word text. So we'll, we'll just click find next. And right there, get next, replace. Right here, get next, replace. And now change this to y. And change this to get y pos. Put your cursor right here. Find next. Replace, replace, and replace. All right, so hit Control S and save, and hit F5 and build the program. And it should build. If you have any um, errors, it should just head back in the code and try and fix them. But it should it should run the exact same except that uh, instead of an X and a Y, we got our Apple objects. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend this is an apple. This blue thing here. Alright. That's good enough. Okay, so I think this would be a good time to uh take a break and we're gonna we're gonna split it into another couple of videos just so that we can actually localize all of the questions and I can answer them better if they're I don't know, kind of split up into specific sections. So I apologize to those who already know how to do object-oriented programming and making classes and stuff. I hope it was kind of almost a, a good refresher for you. But for those who who have never done this before, I'm I hope you're I hope you're following along. We're gonna get into more exciting stuff in the in the next video, so stay tuned.